Hey. Oh, yes, yeah, so much better. Oh, my gosh. I need to get newer phones. It's just those ones have the mic on it, but I'm recording from here, so it's grand. Uh, welcome to We Met IRL. Hey. For the listeners, this is Khalid Rahman. Khalid Rahman in the Rahman. house. <laughs> Happy to be here. <laughs> Checking I hate, in. I hate saying uh, last names. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Good to see you. So you already know what the team of the podcast is. Basically, I have people on who tell me about dates they've met uh, or lovers or relationships in real life. So not online. So like an anti-online dating podcast. The anti-online dating podcast. Very hot take. Very controversial in 2020. I, I love know, it. No, right? Because nobody can meet each other in real life now. How did we do it before? People used to like walk up to each other in bars like perverts <laughs> and say hello. <laughs> and make eye contact and touch each other. Oh my God. You'd be, out, so, you'd, be out, you'd be arrested for that kind of behavior now. Yeah, the idea was that I wanted not to like, uh, so the idea was before the pandemic, but I wanted to like meet someone in real life. So I would like get these advice and stuff without having to go online, but obviously that's out the window. But, uh, but I still want to gather the stories. So... Do you have any success or failure stories from meeting people in real life? Yeah, I actually, um, I met a really cool girl on the train. So Ooh. back in the, yeah, back in the day, one of my main moves was what I called uh, run-ups. And um, this is when you just would just walk up on a lady and just start chatting her up, no matter where you are. I just, I'd, I'd call it run-ups, I'd be running up on them. I love that, that's great. It's so funny because I told my friend about this, my friend who's from uh, Australia about my run-ups. And she was like, are you, were you literally running up to women, just sprinting at them full speed? I'm like, no, it's just like a, a figure of speech. Yeah, because, so, because I know you, I know that you're not running up and grabbing them, but it does seem a bit like, are, are, are they okay? <laughs> Surprise, bitch. <laughs> you're going to date me. <laughs> we together now. <laughs> no, but I would, I would, um. My big place that I would meet women would be on the subway. I was like really confident in just walking up on women on the subway, chatting them up. I just noticed something about what they were wearing or if they were reading a book. I'd comment on that. I'd just get the conversation going. And the next thing I knew, a few stops later, I'd have their phone number and we go on a date and everything. I love that. That's great. Yeah, I, wish I, I wish I still had that. I <laughs> wish I had that 2013 confidence <laughs> to do that. I don't have that anymore. I think I got lazy because of online dating. But yeah, one time I was... um at the Union Square subway station, saw this really cute chick uh, across the platform. And we were, uh, we were waiting for the same train to go into Brooklyn. And I saw she was reading a Sports Illustrated. So I was like, how often do you see like a beautiful woman reading a Sports Illustrated? Then I looked closer and she had a necklace on that said, um, it said Yankees. You and know what? I, like, I would love it being you got closer within the Sports Illustrator. There was just like a copy of Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> she was just using. But I've been duped. <laughs> yeah. And the Yankees necklace is really just like from H&M. Like the way I wear Kiss t-shirts. <laughs> I don't know any of their songs. I've been hoodwinked. I've been bamboozled. Yeah. <laughs> <All services>. That's <laughs> so cool. I love that. But it was great. So I, I decided, you know what, I got to talk to this woman. And you know what was, was great was we were making eyes at each other across the platform. Okay. And I could see, like, we were just definitely checking each other out. And I was like, I think she might be interested. So I, I made a point of sitting uh, directly across from her on the subway because if you sit next to someone, that's a really creepy way to talk to them. <laughs> You're just, like, cocking your head to the side yeah. and, like, being all in their personal space. So instead, I looked across. And I did something later that year I found out was considered very, like, like toxic masculinity. You spread I, your legs. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I manspread all over the train. <laughs> no, I wouldn't call it, um, I did this thing where I, she had her, her, she had her uh, earbuds in. So I made, like, a gesture to, like, get her to take her earbuds out because I wanted oh. to say something to her. I went like this, you know, I, like, pulled down on my ear. Yeah. And she took her earbuds out and she goes, yeah. And I was like... So, Robinson Cano, huh? And that's the, Yankee, <laughs> that's the Yankee who was on the front page of the Sports Illustrated she was reading. Yeah. She was like, yeah, he's my favorite player. He's having a breakout season. I'm so happy. And she like, knew all this stuff about him. And I was like, oh, this is a hardcore Yankees fan. Yeah. So, already I was like, this is like my kind of girl. She's linked to sports. And then I mentioned I liked her necklace. She was like, yeah, my dad got it for me. It was like our thing going to Yankee games when I was a kid. 
And we just started chatting and like really like hitting it off. And like people around us on the train were definitely looking like, oh, this dude is, this dude got game. This brother is smooth. Yeah. <laughs> At least that was my internal monologue. I'm like, yeah, they all think I'm smooth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, they're just like, oh no, this poor woman. No. Yeah. <laughs> but like wait, someone help this woman. Yeah, but yeah, they're like looking at her, trying to make eye contact. No, but wait, who? Why did she? Who told you that the pulling the ear, the earphone? Oh, I wouldn't have minded that. Thing. It was a whole thing that year in the whole like blogosphere. It was like toxic oh, masculinity. Really? Don't talk to women on the street. Don't ask them to interrupt their oh. music listening for your own, you know, gratification. It was like this whole thing. Like, don't tell oh, women no. to take their earbuds out. Yeah. Of course, I like tend to like, like roam around in this like very woke liberal part of like the internet just yeah. to like get just to get outraged at their wokeness <laughs> i always have a clue what's going on and then find out 10 months later i'm like oh i should have been annoyed about that oh boo man sorry <laughs> that's why that's why i love you because you're like you're so irish that you're just like what is all this nonsense they're talking about <laughs> even when they were yeah sometimes like comics like or even like with the chris delay thing i have never seen his stand-up and I don't what know anything. That? What is the Chris D'Elia thing? I heard something about this earlier. What happened? Oh, so just a uh, side side step for a second. But he he was he was like sleeping. I guess I don't know the full thing, but I think he was like sleeping with sixteen year olds. But like, um, yeah, when recently. He, yeah, like in, I guess in the past ten years, what? and a lot of a lot of girls who are now like older who are like, oh, that was creepy. Wow. And I don't again, I don't know the full thing of it, but like, it's just I don't even I've never even seen a stand up. Like sometimes I'm like I think I'm on a different planet. Katie, I'm gonna I'm gonna help you out for a second because his father is a very powerful entertainment lawyer. We're gonna go ahead and throw in allegedly. <laughs> Yes, allegedly. <laughs> like dad, I said, like, I have runs, no idea. His dad like runs Hollywood. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh oh well, you know, well pity I'm too old for him. <laughs> He's like all of a sudden you get a deportation notice in the mail. And I'm like, hey, I said I didn't know. And they're yeah. like, it's more you didn't watch his stand-up. So allegedly. <laughs> no, but um but yeah, it's like it's one of those weird things. But um so I, I was just talking to her all the mm. way on the Q train across uh, the water, going over the bridge. And then by the time we were coming to Atlantic Avenue, which was both of our stops, I was like, you know what? It was really great talking to you. We should definitely like grab a beer sometime. And she goes, we should do that. And I was like, well, you should give me, my, you should give me your number then. And she was like, I should do that. And she, I took up my phone and gave it to her and she punched it in. And then we and went on, we went on several dates. We ended up like dating for like a, little, like a minute, like a half minute. She wasn't that into it, I could tell after a while. And like. Aww. I wish you got married and had kids. <laughs> no, she's, um, we're actually good friends now. We're actually talking, oh, it's about, great. We're talking about starting a podcast together. <laughs> okay, that's great. That's still, yeah. I always feel like even if it doesn't end up in like long-term relationship, if it ends up in a friendship, that's still a success. Because most romantic relationships just don't work out. Yeah. I'm sorry, you paused for a second. I don't know if oh, it's... No. Okay, now you're back. Woohoo! Right. That was just a bit of suspense. But yeah, I think I caught what you said that most romantic relationships don't end uh, successfully yet. Or yeah, it's really tough. Yeah. But you can hang on to a friend, you know? So, yeah, like, exactly. yeah, I was, I was like, the, how it turned out. Oh, I love that. That's great. And so, how, long, how many months did you guys date for? We dated for like uh, maybe like two or three months. Yeah, that's a long and... time for New York. <laughs> <laughs> for New York, that's like four years. <laughs> yeah, that's four years in Ireland. <laughs> yeah, definitely, it definitely fizzled out, but I'm still glad like I met her. She's like still one of my good friends. We hung out last week. It was awesome. It's great. I love that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I've had people talk to me on the train. One time a guy talked to me on the train, but I was A, dressed like Ariana Grande, so he was asking a different girl out. Okay, that's not usually me, okay, with the mm. boots and the, all the, the eyelashes and the hair he on met, top of the head. He met your representative. Yeah, yeah. And then he was all like, you know, I was just like, whatever, I gave him my number. But then the next day I woke up with like a bunch of missed calls and a bunch of text messages. And I was like, oh, no, this is scary. So I just blocked him. Oh. Yeah. So, but any other, any other? I love this. This was great. Well, yeah. I mean, well, there's some, some comedians who I met in person and ended up <laughs> dating for a half second. <laughs> I love that. People are always like, don't shit where you eat. But you're like, well, you know, there's just a lot of comedians. <laughs> I mean, it's just really tempting to take a shit. <laughs> yeah, it feels good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those things where like, I mean, most, a lot of people meet at work. Yeah. And, and then you see like success stories like Joe List and Sarah Talamash yes. and 
Noah Garden Schwartz and, and his wife. And it's one of those things where you're like, maybe it could work, but it usually just goes terribly badly. Just <laughs> yeah. really, really badly. Uh, but the good thing is I am friends with two of the three women who I dated who were comedians, which is yeah, great. Yeah, that's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah, and like we just, you know, we'd met like at open mics or at shows and they just had like something huge in common right away, which is great. I mean, that's such, yeah. a, huge, that's such a huge barrier to overcome right away. You can just know you have something to talk about. And it was really fun. And then the third, I'm uh, going to say I regret that one. That, that was a, oh, let me get a do-over because it is uncomfortable. We see yeah. each other, but what can you say? It is uncomfortable. That's the thing. I, I find as well, like, if they're in comedy – you know, they're, it's, they're in your, it's, they're going to be in your world for a while. So like, even though you're like, you stop seeing them, you don't want to like unfollow each other on Instagram because that's yeah. rude. So then you're still seeing their posts. You kind of have to like do a sly mute and it's just like, oh, I'm going to see them at shows. It's hard. I mean, I've seen, I've seen it go real wrong. I've seen like people who I know talking shit about each other on stage and everyone knows who they're talking about. And I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah, that's my nightmare. I was like, why would anyone ever date someone they work with? <laughs> but of course it happens like again and again. So of course it's something we can't resist about it, you know? I just never understand though why people do like as well, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be shitty, like that's where you, you, how do you not know that everybody's gonna talk about it or like- well, Especially like, I mean, I remember this whole thing where a friend of mine was dating this one comedian and then he broke up with her and started dating another comedian. And then all of her friends started like shitting on that other girl that he started dating. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is crazy. And then like, to this day, there's still fallout from it. I'm like, why would you ever do this? I know, I know exactly uh, the people you're talking about. And <laughs> this, this shows how much of a, of, of like not clued in when shit happens. Cause yeah. you know, I'm always just like walking around. I just don't really be paying attention. <laughs> it's just too busy. Your heads, in clouds. heads in the clouds you're so just, just thinking about shamrocks <laughs> yeah i'm just like thinking about dolphins or something stupid i have no idea what's going on in the world and um so for the listeners i guess how do i explain well so there's there's a co male comic and then his his girlfriend and uh, wife is amazing yeah. she's amazing and i've always gotten on really well with the ex-girlfriend as well mm -hmm. now i didn't know any of this that anybody had been seeing each other or whatever and I went out for dinner with the ex-girlfriend and her friends. They took me out. They were just like, oh, look, here's the cute little immigrant girl. Let's bring her out with us. You know, it's, it's kind of like they were like, you know, when the popular girls at school take out the dorky girl for a makeover. That's what it felt like. Of course, yeah. And then they're all like, and then they're like, oh, we should include Katie in conversation. I'm just sitting there eating. And they go, where do you live? And I go, oh, I live right beside such and such. And so I say current girlfriend's name. Uh -oh. And the air was sucked out of the room. And they were kind of looking at me. And then one of the girls kind of like said something like, oh, she doesn't know. And then I found out afterwards that it's like the gossip of like the, oh my, the that and I had no idea. The, I was just like, yeah, I live right beside such and such. She's so nice. <laughs> that was the saga also because that was two separate couples who like, because there was, there, was, there was just people who just only dated comedians. Yeah. Which to me is just wild. Like you got to take a break. You know, and I, I love all the people involved for, for, for the most part. Yeah. But it's like, man, that's so weird to me that people just like, it's like one's been, I mean, everyone I know, who know who's a comic who no longer dates comedians has that one terrible experience that like put them off of it forever. And yes. I definitely had that. And I'm so glad I did because it just probably saved me so much like trouble. Yeah, I had, I, I've dated about three comedians, I think, very quietly where no one would know at the time. Oh, actually, I guess technically four. In five, <laughs> in, in five years, that's not bad. It only la ever lasts like a month and then I'm like, oh, good luck. You're like adding them up like, well, actually, yeah. uh, carry the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess when I first started comedy, I was dating this comedian and he's like an alt comedy guy. And uh, again, nobody knew about this until years later. I kept my mouth pretty shut about it. But um, he, maybe a year later, and we've been seeing each other, but it was never exclusive. But of course, I had just come from Ireland and I kind of was off the mindset. Anyone I'd seen before, when you started seeing each other, you're not really seeing other people. But while he was seeing me, he blew another comic. <laughs> What? But I found about it a year later, so it was like funny. I was like, did you, with, know, did you know he was bisexual? 
I know. I, I kind of found out afterwards because I think he had just found out. That was the first guy he'd ever done stuff with. So I think he was just... just he just found out. <laughs> it's like the funniest way to put it. Like he just discovered. <laughs> he was just hanging out one day and all of a sudden he was blowing someone. He's like, oh my goodness. That is the Betsy. <laughs> I'm blowing someone. This is a this is a quite this quite the discovery. <laughs> I think he was going through some stuff when he started to see me. And then I was like super like little Irish Catholic girl, like oh looking for a relationship. So I think he was like his brain was exploding. Um, wow. and, and yeah, so I'm having a beer like a year later with this male comedian and he was like talking about him and he didn't know I had ever like dated him for, again, I was like a month or something. And he goes, oh, I take credit for turning him. And I was like, oh, what do you mean? He was like, oh, when we went away together, he, he, he blew me <laughs> or else he blew him. I don't know. There was someone blowing someone. And I was like, oh, that's so funny. I was dating him then. And then we were just laughing. Because in fairness, we weren't exclusive. Like, he's let go. But yeah. you know, you're, you're, it's just not what you expect to hear. I never, yeah. never thought. But uh, but he's that's now so in like an open thing and he's really happy. He's a nice guy. Like, he's not, I wouldn't like be ever, well, I don't know if he's actually a nice guy. He could be like a complete psychopath. I don't know him that well. Yeah. <laughs> but did it's ever, fine. Did you ever, uh, oh, this is a funny in-person one. So, my best buddy is married to a woman who's a triplet. Okay. And um, yeah, so <laughs> I met, I met, I met uh, his wife the same time I met her sisters. So it was very overwhelming because they're all like almost identical looking. Yeah. And then me and one of the sisters ended up hitting it off and hooking up. And it was weird because like she looked exactly like my buddy, my buddy's future wife and it's one of those deals where i i had this 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 habit back in the day where i just didn't understand like do not mess around within friend groups it's just a bad idea it never goes well so that happened and then like it ended up being fine it was a little awkward at first but now we're all chill I, i'm friends with all of them and their husbands and everything but then i was my friend abigail introduced me to to one of her friends at a part at one of her parties and i shamefully throughout the course of maybe i don't know five years ended up like kind of messing around with like four of her friends <laughs> 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 yeah like a real scumbag <laughs> <laughs> the girls are always like who's bringing this guy to the party every time you go to a new party there's another girl kind of a little sad <laughs> there should have been a warning on the door of the party <laughs> <laughs> like, do not speak to this man. He is no good. He is a terrible, bad man. <laughs> that is so yeah, funny. Yeah, so I've learned to, like, just stop. And then, like, my friend, uh, my friend Matuya, uh, after, like, things went sideways with, like, one of her friends, who was the second of her friends who I had, who I, I had dated, she goes, hey, how about this? How about you just not date any more of my <laughs> friends? <laughs> I love that. That's great. And I was like, you know what? Fair. That's fair. Yeah. That's very fair. I, I concede your point. It's funny because most people, like my stepmom will, like, will be like, would you not get one of your friends to introduce you to like a brother or something? But now oh. I'm like, actually, yeah, you don't think about it if it goes wrong. You don't want that. Yeah. yeah you know what it is? You know what it is? You're, re you're not only responsible to the person you're dating, you're now responsible to the person who introduced you. Yeah. So like so you true. have like even more pressure and like... I don't know. And if you're, you know, if you're a dirt bag, it's, it's especially bad news. <laughs> but thankfully, you're not. Yeah, no, no. It, it might be that they turn out to be a dirt bird and then the other people feel uncomfortable. It's yeah. like, oh, I'm so sorry. My brother is a slut, you know. <laughs> I must say that this, this is in the past. I am reforming my ways. I've been, you know, on the good path of, re of reformation. Good. Just again for the for for the entertainment lawyer listening type of people. <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, I was a dirtbag. Allegedly, yeah. <laughs> imagine if Chris Leah ever did. Like, why would he ever listen? Imagine, oh my so, god! I mean, somebody, some six, some sixteen-year-old who listens to this might recommend it to him. So don't. It would be but, it would be hilarious if you all of a sudden you just get a very stern legalese <laughs> letter. It's like, uh, Miss Katie Boyle, cease and desist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I've made it. Um, you know, that's when you were saying about like when you go to a party and there's loads of people there that you've like kissed. So I used to work mm. in this um, hotel and everybody was 
like associated with each other through sex. Like I remember one time thinking, and now I'd been with my boyfriend at the time for like the whole time I was there. So I had the least amount of connections. But I remember being like, you could draw a map. There was like a brother and sister who worked there and they had kissed or slept with the same person. There was, um, oh, like, I probably shouldn't say that now because people, if they listen, well, oops, okay, well, shit. They, well, oops, okay. <laughs> I don't think they listen to this. But there was like also like just everybody was connected because we were all there for years working and it was hard not to be, so course i mean i remember one time that's that's the thing like you don't want to have those moments you know what i mean i remember once i was at a show and i was in the back with the other comics and this female comic turned to me and she goes i've fucked every person on this lineup <laughs> <laughs> and then i turned to her i was like i was like how come not me yeah, yeah. what did i do how come i screwed up you're like bathroom no and we just laughed and laughed and laughed <laughs> She was, then I think that was like a serious wake up call. She was like, yeah, I got to slow down. I'm like, yeah, you do. But it's hard because like comedy like that or when you work in the bar industry is like that. It's very incestuous because we all get drunk together afterwards. Yeah. That's why I never got too drunk with comedy because I'm thankful I learned my lessons when I was working in bars because it, you couldn't help but have like kiss someone your friend had kissed because you're just out drinking every night it's late night culture they're the only people you meet it's like the only saving grace for me in my la in my job in ireland was just that i was with someone for a few years and then the few months that i wasn't i was like hello boys <laughs> <laughs> i was like i can't leave the country <laughs> open for business <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i remember i was kissing one guy on the slide because my ex was like very angry so I, was, I used to kiss one guy on the sly all the time. And mm. then even when I would come home, we, we never had sex. Even when I came home, we would like catch up and we would kiss. But we can't anymore now because he's in a serious, serious relationship. But ah. yeah, but yeah. That's so wild. Yeah. yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I've had quite a journey, Katie. I've had a real journey to just get into a better place and not just being a runaround dog. I mean, I was a runaround dog for a long time. And why, why is that just out of curiosity? Cause like, um, I've always, I've always wondered, okay, well, I always get to the point where I'm like, I want a relationship, but then when I get close to it, I'm like, I want to have sex with a stranger in a bathroom and I don't do it, but I don't know why that even pops into my head. So I was been thinking about this a lot lately. Like, why is mm. there, cause I know so many guys who are like, Oh, I have a great girl, but I just want to sleep around. Why? I know, Is it I know why. I figured okay. out recently why. I talked about it in therapy for a couple of years and that okay, didn't great. get to the root of it, but I've recently figured oh. out why. And it's and it, I figured out because I've recently, very recently met someone who I think could be a serious thing at some yeah. point. Um, and what it is was I had very low standards for the non sexual part. I had a very low standard for the for the interpersonal connection. Okay. So like the girl I've met recently, I just love talking to her. Aww. Like we hung out the other day and we just talked for like four hours and yeah. we didn't do anything physical. Then she slept over, nothing physical because we had planned on kind of like scaling it back with that and trying to like yeah. reset. And it was so great. Just like, like a very chaste, like junior high style sleepover. Where we just talked most of the night, woke up, made her breakfast, went for a bike ride and just had a nice time without any physical stuff. And I really figured out that like, when you can just talk to someone and it's like, feels like four hours is four minutes. That's when you got something. Yeah. Never, never mind like the butterflies of like, Oh, I'm so physically attracted. It's really all about like, can you connect and like talk in a way that just, you just can't wait to see what else they have to say. And I, I think that's that. where it's at. And I had had very low standards for that for a long time. And now after like this, I don't want to ever be with someone who I don't want to have that with. I don't want to be with someone who I don't want to talk to for three hours and not even know where the time went. Yeah, no, I know. I love that so much because something like my aunt had said to me once, because I uh, last year it was like this, I was dating this like gorgeous guy, but he was like very mental um and but this sex was great and but like we had nothing we didn't relate on anything like he didn't believe in space our conversations <laughs> had no 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 matching you gotta, you gotta stop dating these white guys <laughs> i know well i've dated all over the world that's what my dad said a quote okay. he said everyone but irishmen <laughs> that's great 
He was like, what's your problem with Irishmen? Because he thinks if I date an Irishman, I'll come home one day. But Uh, yeah, no, I am like, yeah, but that was that was the Eastern European guy. So yeah, he's very, very white. Um, But, you know, my when I went home and my my aunt was like, you know what, you just have to really realize that if you're going to pick a partner, conversation is so important because sex will come and go and you can make sex better. And she said, there's going to be times when you need, you need to always like them. She goes, there's going to be times when you don't love them. There's going to be times when you do love them, but you've got to make sure you always like them. And yes. I was like, oh, that's such good advice. It's so weird that it took like all this time and then finally meeting someone who had the thing that I want to realize all the time I wasted with people who didn't have that thing. Well, here's the thing. I don't think we necessarily waited, wasted because it mm-hmm. took all of that to meet this girl. That's and true. even if it doesn't work out with this girl, at least you know now. But secondly, um, you obviously didn't stay with those girls yep. because there was something missing. So at least you know, you technically you didn't settle because you didn't stay forever. Yeah, and, and you do have to kind of like deal with a lot of stuff that you don't want to do to kind of get to what you do want. Yeah. So I think maybe that was what I was doing because I kissed a lot of frogs. <laughs> <laughs> I was down at the lily pad, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I, some, I've kissed some people that I've been like, I must have really had some low standards because I'm like, what was I thinking? I was tr- trying to turn some frogs into princesses. <laughs> it was not working. Yeah, no, no. It's, I think we're, we've all been there. Sometimes it's a real reflection of your self-esteem. Mm, and you're like, mm. oh, okay, I was going through something. Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, the two serious relationships I had before – were with great women who are now like married and have kids with the great people. But I know at the time I was just in a bad place and it was not going to work. You got to feel good about yourself and what you're going before you can bring somebody else on board. Yeah, time Especially and like for men, it's like a very much like a pride, self-esteem, handling your business kind of like gendered thing. Yeah. So that was what, I, what, what happened with that. It was like, there was no way. And now I'm in a good place. So I feel like, oh, this, this is a good time to bring someone in. Yeah, you know? I love that. I'm so excited yeah. for you. And how did you meet this girl in real life? Ah, uh, online. Oh, Jesus. The person I'm talking, the person I'm seeing now as well, I met online. So it's really not an uh, ideal podcast. <laughs> 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 I'm like, no, the, you know, I literally did exactly what I did. But what, okay, so what online site did you meet? Uh, we met on Bumble. Bumble. I liked your tweet. You tweeted something like, oh, something about oh, how- Oh, you we- have a better chance of being struck by lightning <laughs> than having a woman on Bumble open with more than a hey. <laughs> That's so great because I got off Bumble because I was like, I can't think of anything to say to these guys. Yeah. And whereas Hinge, I can say something to, th- to their answer or I can like their answer and then that can start a conversation. I really, I, I think Hinge changed the game for me. Oh, Hinge, definitely. I mean, it's- it was one of the better ones because there's not swiping. Yes. And I think this, there's something about the swiping that makes people like kind of seem disposable. Yes. Like, I don't know if that's why like Tinder never worked for me even once. Like I never met anyone from Tinder decent. Um, but I feel like the ones where there's kind of more humanity to like you kind of stop and like look at someone's profile then write them something. It's a little bit better. Yeah. Did you meet her pre-pandemic or did you, was it during the pandemic you got to? Dur- our first date was during the pandemic. <laughs> I love this. This is so bold. This is wild. Well, she has the antibodies, so she. Oh, good had- for her. Yeah, she already had it in March, and then I've been tested a few times, and I'm clean. So I was like, "Why not?" <laughs> I love how that's the new STD. <laughs> test. Yeah, I, I you have to check with people to see what their status is because you know mm-hmm. you don't want to get in trouble. I need to get well. So I. have we, my, the guy that I'm seeing is like really freaked out by COVID. So he's, he gives me so much anxiety that I told him we can't talk about COVID anymore. That if he wants to meet up with me, he has to leave the conversation at the door. Where is he at? Um, he's in Brooklyn. Um, uh, what's his testing status? What's your testing status? Oh, so I haven't been tested. He got tested. You um, gotta get tested. You gotta get tested. Yeah. It's well, free. yeah, well, I, yeah, I guess I was like kind of nervous to go. I'm always nervous to go to the doctors. I'm really slow with that stuff. So I should go, especially no, now that I'm going to, yeah. yeah. And I think as well, we'll give him a bit of peace of mind and mm-hmm. he's got, he te- mm-hmm. but he's, oh yeah, but he's waiting for the results. And now we have, we both have decided that we would be the only, we would be included in the group of people that we're seeing. In other words, like, so, you know, the way Cuomo said, you can have like a few people that you can kind of socially distance with or whatever. Okay. So he's only seeing his brother's sister-in-law and me. 
and his roommate. So he's not like smooching other people. And I'm only seeing like Brendan Saglo and uh, my roommate or whatever. So I'm not kissing other people either. So it's no risk of like. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, I, so I think it's fine. But like, yeah, we've had a couple of social distance dates and then we had like a date in my apartment. Uh, and, you know, true. And, you know. You know, true all. Yeah, no. <laughs> true, true all caution to the I mean, wind. I'm, I'm like, I feel like I am. Uh, take I take it seriously, but I'm not afraid. So I bought a infrared uh, thermometer, and I take my temp- my temperature every morning, and every morning 97 point, you know something. So always healthy, and I got tested a couple of weeks ago, and like you know I try to like you know that distance and everything, and I don't see I see like one person at a time. I don't yeah. do like the groups usually or anything like that, but I feel like people who are just living this like fearful i'm in the bunker lifestyle it's not the way to go it's like you're, just gonna, you're gonna drive yourself crazy it's i have friends who are, i have friends who are afraid to leave their apartments i'm like dude you gotta yeah it's not good for your mental health and then no. the thing is as well wait so do you have the antibodies no i've never okay, had so it um, i tested negative on the nasal swab and on the antibody test okay the nasal wow. swab by the way is intense so prepare yes, yourself i i'm scared they of get that. up in there <laughs> And like, um, I'm back to work just a couple of hours a week. So nothing to survive at. Like, it's just enough to survive where I don't really know, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, so I was telling uh, Hinge Guy uh, that basically, I, I, if, he, if he's choosing to see me uh, outside of his group of family, and there's a high risk. Um, you know, because I'll be, t- I'm touching money and like, I'm trying to be as careful as possible, but I'm the only one running the whole place for a couple of hours and I might make a mistake. So I told him I was, had a, I had a nightmare that I killed. Oh, I didn't tell him this yet. I had a nightmare that I, <laughs> that I killed him with COVID because he oh, talks no. about it so much because his friend passed away from it and his friend was oh, like boy. a low risk. Um, so he's like extra, but you know, it's fine. He's just like, he's like. He, he like wants to see me. So I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, once you know the risks, cause I have gone back for a couple of hours a week, you know, and we've both been out protesting. That's the other thing, but we're like wearing our masks when we protest. So. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a tough thing because like, it's so important, but at the same time, there's big groups of people, which is what everyone is saying we're not supposed to be doing. Um, I haven't been going down there because my roommate's not going. And I feel like it's not fair for me to go and then yes. come back home and expose her to me when I've been exposed yes. to thousands of people and she's intentionally not doing that. So it's yes. one of those things where you have to be like extra careful and extra ethical with what you're doing. No, absolutely. Then whereas my roommate, she's like, she's been out protesting like housing rights yeah. before even the Black Lives Matter protests. So yep. uh, she's like, we got to go. I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and then, she, you know, she's had, her. so yeah. So like, I think, yeah, that's what I just said to, I keep going to nearly say his name. That's what I just said to him. I was like, look, you just have to, if you're, if you're okay with like there, there being a risk. And he was like, yeah, yeah. But it's just like he said, but that's great. I love that you guys, cause isn't it nice with the uh, pandemic? Not that we would wish to death, but to get to know someone slowly it is like an old school romance. It's very nice. We've been seeing each other once a week mm-hmm. and she travels for work and uh, it's been great. She Thank like, you know, goodness. gets in her car and goes down to a different state to like, handles some stuff and comes back and we just it's it's been really nice we have these like long like three hour four hour long in like uh facetime dates that are wonderful yeah that's the same as me and your man as well like it's long it's all talk talking before we even it was three and a half months before we got to do something physical Mm. so which is fun i was so nervous i was like a little kid i was like oh my god how do i how do i do this again it's like being a teenager again yeah and it's not like i wasn't you know yeah, I was never like, I had like last year, I think I only had sex with three or two guys in the whole year, but it's more when you're told you can't. And I've never talked to someone for fucking three and a half months. I really, it, Gigi, I felt like I was like, I was talking to my stepmom and I go, I felt like I was 15 again. And I was like, oh shit, I just told her what age I lost my virginity. I was like, I mean like <laughs> 17. <laughs> like 15 is so fucking young. Virginity. I was a month before my 16th. <laughs> yeah, she, she didn't mind. She's so funny. I'm always like, okay, I'm going to share too much, but I like love her advice. She gives me great advice. So I'm like, and then this happened. It's so great you had that relationship because a lot of people do not have that at all. I'm so lucky. I'm so yeah. lucky. Um, okay, so that's so funny. That's great. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, God, I love this. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, it feels good. Um, I don't know. It is very weird, though. Our first date, she, we, I, I, so I did this. I took her to a, a park, 
and we had a picnic. I bought like all a whole big picnic fixings, like a blanket and wine and cheese and dates and grapes and all this stuff. And uh, we just got kind of drunk wa and watched the water and just talked. And at first she was a little pretty hardcore freaked out, I could tell, for beating <laughs> up someone during a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then we like took our mask off and we started having a couple of drinks and we just like started talking and it was like seemed pretty normal after a while. But it yeah. was weird. It was very weird. This is the exact same as our first date as well. And you know what the thing is as well, when you were saying, oh, I've never really had the conversation before, but the, before the pandemic and a very New York style of dating is you nearly don't need to have the conversation. You go like, what my guy was saying to me, he was like, oh, I've never had been forced to talk to someone so much before. Whereas, and it's true, because sometimes you go to a bar, there's music, you're just like, well, you get drunk, you have sex. So mm -hmm. this is like, you're really building up a, a an emotional connection. This is so funny. Leclerc just signed in. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm gonna link oh him in. Oh my god. But anyway, right on I, time. Right I think, on time. <laughs> I, we'll get him for like 10 minutes. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, but I think that's probably it. And I think a lot of people are going to read and even I'm putting into the effort into the picnic date, which usually we wouldn't be able to have a picnic date. We would just go to a bar. It's so nice. Like we're doing, so I cooked him dinner when he, like the first time we decided to like come over to my apartment, I cooked him dinner and you know, it's like nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it was, we're back in the 1800s. We're going to start, uh, we're going to start sending our parents uh, permission slips. Just like, may I date your daughter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind sir, on the morrow. I hope he doesn't, my dad will say no, he's not Irish. <laughs> he's Filipino. Oh man, definitely not. <laughs> he's gonna be like, absolutely not. <laughs> so, hey, look who it is. He's coming online. He's getting his audio all set. Oh, you know, Carmen Legala has a great joke about uh, hand up. about Zooms that, you know, when you're in a Zoom meeting and everybody goes, hi, and then they go, oh, wait, they're just putting in their audio. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> oh, man, that's great. So Leclerc Andre has just joined. Uh, you guys have a podcast together. As well. What's it called? I forgot. We used to. Uh, we oh. had a podcast called F and Up. But it is, it is no more, but we are still very good buddies. We're still working together, doing gigs together, keeping in touch. Um, yeah. So Leclerc, you came on much later. So we will we're probably re rounding it up in like 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a different time zone. And I That's got okay. Up, so. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you coming on anyway. <laughs> it's 6.20 here. So I was like, yeah, right on time. <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It's the pandemic lifestyle. Well, maybe share with us a quick story about me. Did you meet your, you met your wife in real life, right? I yeah. did. Yeah. I met her in real life. We used to work together. See, yeah. you meet people at work. Lid was just saying that. Yeah. I met her at work. Uh, she was a cocktail waitress. I was a bartender, you know, a tale as old as time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. And we just, built a relationship from there. It was really nice. Oh, that's great. I love that. How did you ask her out? Um, <laughs> how did I ask her out? You know what I did? <laughs> I, uh, I, through knowing her for a while, I, was, I found out that she really likes amusement parks. So she was kind of going through a rough time and we were talking about, she was going through a rough time. I was like, hey, you want to go to this amusement park? And that was my trap. And uh, we had a great time. Ah, and ever since that. then, ever since then, every year on June 10th, which is like the anniversary of that first date, we always go to an amusement park. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I love man. That. Look at this guy out here romancing. Yeah. And do you, so you've been together uh, for like a really long time, right? Well, I've known her for probably closer to seven, seven, eight years now, but. We, we've been married for almost a year. We dated for a year before that. So yeah, for a little bit. And do you still like try to do romantic things like that? Oh yeah, just yesterday we went and had uh, dinner at the lake. Ooh. Yeah, I'm in Austin. So like there's a, like, a nice little lakefront. So we went there, we made baguettes and some wine and we went over there to the to the lake and we put our feet in the water and we just had dinner oh that's lovely oh i wish we had a lake 
This guy's out here breaking hearts, man. <laughs> He's not going to have no more listeners left. He just broke all the hearts. <laughs> we gotta keep us, you, know, you know what I found has been a big key to our success in our relationship is we have great like traditions and rituals, like mm -hmm. things that we try to do consistently that we both enjoy. Um, and that's something that just continues to bring joy into our relationship. It's the best. I've heard, I've heard that this thing's the saying that you should never stop dating your wife. Yes. Yes. Right. Well, that's what Cle Cle or, sorry, uh, Leclerc was saying to me. I was talking one time, I was asking you for advice and you were saying like basically like how important date night has been and that once you were like set aside like a day a week for your, and your and Beth is the same as well. But that was really important. Yeah, it's, it's really, really important, especially when your schedules don't naturally coincide. So I do stand-up comedy, and she teaches during the day. So, like, if we're not very deliberate and intentional about how we delegate our time, we would never see each other. Yeah. So it's really important for me to communicate my, with my schedule, her to communicate with me, so that we can make sure we designate time to just spend with each other, even if it's just watching Netflix. We have yeah. time together where we're very, very intentional about spending it with each other. I love this. That's great. It's great advice to anybody listening. Yeah. Also, uh, good sex. Make sure you guys... <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? Make sure you guys what? Fuck a lot. Oh, uh, fuck a lot. Yeah, you got to <laughs> fuck. You got to keep, keep the sex. Make sure you're throwing down in the old boudoir. Yeah, <laughs> you got to keep it wet, wet. So, <laughs> major key. I should have opened up. Major key, laid a pipe. Also, rituals. Uh, <laughs> That's great. I love it. Yeah, I, I'm not, I tried to date a little bit, uh, like meeting people online and stuff. It just never really worked out for me. It's hard to build those connections. You know what I mean? I know Clint knows what I mean. Oh, yeah. Those connections are hard. But when you're like just working with people and you get to know them, there's nothing forced. There's no, there's no expectations. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing. Yeah. It's just talking to a person, not expecting anything from each other. You really get a feel for who a person is and how they carry themselves. And then from there, it's easy to make a decision. Oh, they're probably going to be great in a relationship, right? So that's one thing. But when you come and you meet each other and like the expectation is sex or a kiss or a relationship, it makes it difficult to figure each other out as people. No, absolutely. I like I'm very anti online for those exact reasons. And the only reason why I'd be pro online is in a pandemic because you can't have sex. Well, we couldn't at the start. And you, you have to get to know each other because you're like in lockdown. But that's the same with yeah, real life you can kinda especially if they're kind of a friend before, I feel like, yeah. You're like, you know, you know what you know what's up. Right. And guys can be bad at being friends, right? We can all agree. Sometimes it's tough to like I know, Katie, I know you have a lot of guy friends in comedy, but sometimes it's hard for guys to just treat girls like just friends without wondering what that mouth do. So, yeah. <laughs> I do lose friends when I get in relationships, though. I've always been like, oh, now I can tell who my real friends, guy friends are. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it happens the other way around, too. Don't get it twisted, Katie. Like, oftentimes, like, I'll get in a relationship, and then girls who I used to text all the time, they're like... Uh, they're kind really? of still in reply. So I'm like, oh, you just wanted some D, didn't you? Well, that's good to know. I'm glad. Yeah. yeah. We're all shitty. <laughs> <laughs> Equality, feminism. We're all shitty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You didn't need me to tell you that. Yeah, we're all shitty. Terrible people. But us three, we're amazing. We're the exceptions. Yeah, we're the best. We're tremendous. <laughs> 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 was that your Trump impression? It was, but I'm so cool. I don't even look like him. So. <laughs> well, I just also don't watch Trump, so I have to ask. I, I, need to, I just don't watch the news. I hate it. It's too sad. Mm. You're probably better for it. I know, but then I'm like miss, missing out on certain conversations. Or I'm like getting in trouble because I don't know like the new rules. So like I should really, I should really. But it's hard. Oh, anyway, the whole I, online in general, not even just dating right now, online is too much for me. I just go on, post a joke, and then I back the fuck out. Yeah, it's easy to scroll. I know, and then people are, are mad. They're like, I saw someone without a mask, and I'm like, I don't even want to know. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever been caught out without a mask? Has that happened to you guys yet? 
Uh, I've not been called out for not wearing one because I usually am wearing a bandana and I'll keep a bandana in my back pocket just in case I, the one I have gets dirty or something. But I have seen someone get called out for not wearing a mask and it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What happened? <laughs> it was just like a whole group of people just like yelling at this one dude who was just not having it. And they were just kind of started like just try, pretty much just shaming him, just being like, like, get out of here. You're, you're, you you don't care about old people. This, people just started throwing stuff at him. And he was just like, ah, and he just ran out of the, out of the grocery store. It was awesome. Oh my God. He was in the grocery store. Yeah. yeah. It great. It'd be different if he was like walking down the street and no one was near him and he like had it in his hand or something. But yeah, the gr- no, he can't be going indoors. And, but it's, it's, I've only been back like for a couple of hours at the bar, just at the window and just people coming up with a mask on order. And then I'm like, I, I have no judgment because I'm just like, I'll do as I'm told. But I'm like, are you not afraid you're going to get chained? Because people are scary. People are taking photos and they're getting mad. I was, yeah. uh, I was parking. I was trying to lock up my bike the other day. And uh, I noticed that the, the, what do you call it? The little, the little bike like, rack where I was going to lock it up. There was a homeless dude who hangs out on the street, like right near where, the, where, like, where I live. And he was just like laying there. He was just kind of sitting there, like leaning against the bike rack. And he saw me approaching and kind of hesitate. He's like, come on, young blood. Little crone ain't going to hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I, was like, nah. I was like, nah, fam, I'm good. <laughs> I just found somewhere, somewhere else and locked my bike up somewhere else. It was great. Oh, my God. Yeah, weird world. Weird. Yep. I, got, I got called out. I was walking the trail uh, behind the house with my dog and my, um, with my mother-in-law. And this lady comes walking in the opposite direction, and she's wearing a mask. Uh, she puts on her mask as soon as she sees us is what she does, right? So she wasn't wearing one. She put it on as soon as she sees us. And then she steps like five feet off the trail to let us pass. And I'm like, oh, that's considerate. But while we're passing, she goes, you guys are supposed to be wearing masks. I don't know what you're doing not wearing masks. Guess and- what? She's not wrong. Yeah, and <laughs> she's not wrong. Yeah, but, but it, I think if he's in an open space and he's like on a trail, I think it's okay, right? Is uh, it? I don't know. I'm not in an open space on a trail. Well, if, I think you have to be. You have to. It's whether or not you can reasonably expect to run into people in oh, a close quarters. I okay. think that is the thing. That's and that's why I keep a bandana in my pocket because you don't always have to be wearing it. But if you, if you do come across someone, you can just take that bandana yes. out, tie it up, and then you're good to go, and you haven't done anything wrong. Yes, yes. And it doesn't cost you anything to keep a bandana in your pocket. No. Look, oh, wait. Oh, no, I don't have it on. I thought I did. Never mind. You're talking about rules in New York City, though. No, right? I think everywhere, man. It's airborne. It's not like, it's not as, it's not as non It's not, it's no less lethal in Texas. It's less, it's, it's less likely because there's, there's less cases. Although the cases are rising in Texas, Florida, and Arkansas very dramatically this last two weeks. Um, and they're still going down in New York, by the way, in spite of the fact that we've been protesting like crazy in these streets. Uh, but <laughs> I think everyone should take it seriously. And taking it seriously means having something on you at all times in case you encounter someone who has a mask or who is o- who's older, an elderly person, just so you can stay in the right and still like protect them in this case is what you might need. have it. A little necklace with a mask hanging out of it. I just I- put that on and it's ready to go. Yeah, I mean, I don't even mess with that. I just think bandanas look cool, and they're they're easier to just fold and keep in your pocket. So oh, I can hang this off. I can hang this off my chest and then just put it up. I'm very happy with my necklace-made masks. And the other thing is, you never know who's immune, immunocompromised. Like our friend Ayana looks healthy, but she has lupus, so she literally could could like get this and die very very quickly. Yes. But no one to look at her, you'd be like, oh, she's a healthy person. She's in her thirties, yes. but she's not. So like I wear I wear my I keep my bandana on me because I might run into someone like Ayana and I would feel horrible if I didn't know my status and got her sick. Oh so I God. think that's what we that's what we all need to be doing to take care of each other. Well, this oh, lady, yeah. <laughs> I knew I know she was uh, immunocompromised because she was morbidly obese. <laughs> <laughs> this was this had to have been the first trail she has ever walked. And that's this hilarious. Is, this. What, what kills me the most about the way people are reacting to this disease is that, like, people are so high strung about enforcing masks to protect themselves, right? As, as if their health matters now. You're smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> you have every type of diabetes, and, and, and you're making terrible choices with your diet every day, right? But you're going to yell at a person 
who's <laughs> you're gonna yell at a person for them not wearing a mask while they're working out. Like I'm working out in Austin heat, and you want me to be wearing a mask while I'm doing that? Well, also, you're. I just saw someone share that what they specifically said if you're working out do not wear a mask because and i'm gonna find it and read it so you guys talk for two seconds but then i i also have to remind me at 7 45 to get the fuck off because i gotta start the show we got 10 <laughs> minutes we got 10 minutes so you gotta you gotta gonna, roll very soon oh it's the guy i'm it's the guy i'm it's my virtual man this is so funny how it's like virtual seeing someone that it's like real seeing someone oh it's a whole new level okay yeah, Khalid, I think that the rule should be if you are uh, okay. working out in any capacity, you shouldn't be wearing a mask. <laughs> Unless if you're not I, right. I got it. Well, so this is from the WHO. This is from the WHO. People should not wear masks when exercising as masks may reduce the ability to breathe comfortably. Sweat can make the mask become wet more quickly, which makes it difficult to breathe and promotes the growth of microorganisms. Uh, the important preventive measure during exercise is to maintain physical distance at least one meter from others. So there you go, just social distance. Maintain, oh. dis maintain distance. Here's the thing, though. I still say <laughs> keep one, keep something on you in case you come into close quarters. Because at that point, you will no longer be exercising. You'll just be walking past someone who obviously is in, a, in more of a, like, I don't know, anxious mind state. Just keeping it on. There's nothing wrong with. There's no reason not to keep it on you. That's what I'm saying. Well, I also thought. I also thought. And um, one of the comedy clubs organized a stand-up mic, and I thought it was okay because I thought, oh, if they're organizing it, must be. And then Cuomo had said, like, oh, ten people can hang out. So I was like, oh, we just wear our mask and like sit apart. But then I was like, oh, this isn't okay. <laughs> oh not no! Not, so not I didn't good. go to the other one. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> but you just when people when you're kind of it's more the thing like so many people are saying different things and at the time one would said oh 10 people are gonna hang out if you put on your mask yeah. but then i guess it's more like you need to look in more and be like oh is it inside is it outside is it really and yeah it's just and people people have to be give that room for error as well and be like because there's the other thing where people are like shout and you're like i don't know I don't know. I just can't get behind this selective judgment that people have. It's like, bro, you don't wear condoms and you're yelling at me <laughs> for, for not wearing a mask six feet from you. It's like, bro, yeah. like, I don't understand how people are picking yeah. and choosing what they want to be healthy and enforce. It's like, just And I also just, just think, bad. just also like as well, just be nice about it. Let's all still be kind to each other because I got to the point where I was getting so confused about like what the rules were. And I thought, God, if I were, if, if you're, if you're, if you can't leave your house, wait, can I leave my house? Or am I not leave my house? And if you're anyway kind of suicidal or anyway bad mental health, if people shame you for doing something wrong, it's really mm -hmm. hard. So we yeah. have to just be like, just know that because you're hearing so many different things from different people and yeah. even the governor, the governor shouted at people for hanging out at the bars. Yeah. But he had opened up the bar windows. So you need to be really clear what the rules are. And well, I, I think that, yeah, I agree with you. I see. I, it's very confused, a very confusing time, and people yeah. are selective about what they're, what they're okay with and what they're not okay with, and some of it does seem very hypocritical. I actually got have to run, um, okay. but I have loved being on this podcast. You were so <laughs> I great for having you. me. I really appreciate it. Will you say yeah. your Instagram so the people can follow you if they want? Absolutely. You Which can they will follow me it. on Instagram at Khalid says, K-H-A-L-I-D, S A Y S. Um, make sure to check out my weekly comedy show live on Zoom and Twitch at Comedy Hub. Uh, it's called Comedy Ting. We raise money for social justice causes uh, every single week, um, and it's really fun. That's great. Okay, I love you. And Leclerc, do you want to say where to find you other than Texas? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna be in a different time zone. <laughs> Uh, you can also find me on Instagram at Leclerc Andre. Leclerc is spelled L E C L E R C. And Katie, you're the best in the whole world. We love you. I love you. Okay, I love you guys. I'm going to end this so meeting. Much. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye.